Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and it's part two of the conversion of my DC electronic load, my Menu 9811 to 300 watt from its stock 200 watt. Now in part one, you saw me uh, tear the electronic load apart, fit the new heat sink, the MOSFETs, the resistors and pry around the electronics looking for uh, a possible way forward in converting it to 300 watt because when I powered it up in part one you will have seen that I was still limited to a 200 watt limit on the actual display on the front panel here. So in this part two video I do have a plan of attack that I can try and get around that limitation. So as I showed in the part one video, here is the 8051 compatible microprocessor on the unit. Uh, the software is stored inside this microprocessor. So the plan in part one was to possibly take that device from the board and read the code out into my programmer with the intention of looking for perhaps some uh, 0200 strings in the code and converting that to 0300 before burning it back and sticking the device back in the unit. However, as somebody pointed out in the part 1 video, there's an E squared PROM sitting right here, a 24LC64 and perhaps uh, I should take a look at that first. So it's going to be pretty easy to remove that SO8 package from the board, stick that in my programmer and read the contents out. And maybe there's something in there that I can make a simple change to in order to render the device 300 watt compatible. If that fails, then we'll take a look at the actual microprocessor. But for now, I'm going to uh, remove this uh, E squared PROM from the board and read it into the programmer. Now I did actually toy with the idea of using my SO8 clip for directly hooking up across the uh, E squared PROM and reading it into the programmer that way. However, to tell you the truth, I'm not a fan of these devices. You're kind of relying on the pins that control the E squared PROM having a high enough impedance across the rest of the surrounding circuit to allow uh, the programming to take place and even reading out and toggling the various pins. I'm not a fan of doing that. Sometimes you can damage the device doing that. So I'm not going to use that. I'd rather remove the device from the board and read it into the programmer. And I've got a little adapter for my programmer here which will allow me to adapt the SO8 package directly to DIP8 which will go straight onto the programmer. But first things first. I had to go and get some uh, 24LC64s. Now DigiKey, RS, Farnell, none of them had stock. So I had to resort to good old eBay and hope that I actually got some real devices and uh, not some fake parts. So I've got four uh, 24LC64s here. So first of all, let's pop one of these new devices into the adapter into the programmer and let's see if it is actually recognized as a true LC64. Okay first things first let's select the correct device so bring up the dialog box and I'll search for 24 LC64 brings up a list and the second one on the list here microchip 24 LC64 SOIC8 package that'll do there we go, and the uh, chips in the programmer. So let's try a read on the blank EEPROM. And looking good. Yep, and it's 1FFF in size. That's perfect. That's the uh, LC64. So with that done, I think we can go back to the hardware now and let's start removing the existing chip from the board. Okay. And here is that 24LC64 here, ready to take it off the board. So let's go with the hot air. Now I know you won't be able to see this because my hand will be in the way, but uh, it shouldn't take a second. There we go, and that's it off the board. And the next thing I'm going to do is just wick up the pins so that they get a good contact in the actual dip adapter for the programmer. Okay. 
And I think that should do it. And now let's put the chip into the actual dip adapter itself. Just press it down to put it in release mode. And that's it pulled up and looks like we've got good contact. And now into the programmer, getting it orientated correctly. And that's it, and now back to the software. Okay, well after a few false starts with a bad pin connection, let's try again. Yes, got it this time. And we've done a good read. Okay, now let's view the hex. There we go. And yep, it's all looking like valid data to me. Good variety of hex and its ASCII equivalent on the right hand side. And looking through it, I'm not seeing any ASCII that jumps out as being like 0200 or 0300. So, what do we do now? Well, somebody in the last video posted this message. They dumped and reflashed the same chip in uh, the M97 series of the Menu electronic load. And they found out that C0, C4 and C8 hold the float values for the amp voltage and power limit. And, and they suggest here that I should play about with C8. Well, we'll do just that. Now they're suggesting that I change C8 to 4396. Well, let's have a look and see location C8 holds for me at the moment. Well, there's C0, C8 is 4348 I'm getting. So what do those numbers actually mean? Well, here's a little online calculator. We input the hex string here, so 4348 Zero, zero, analyze the data and if you look down here I've got the float value if the input hex is in big endian as is suggested and that is a float value of 200 and if I change it to 4396 analyze again it changes to 300 so yes indeed changing C8 to 4396 may just give me what I'm wanting. But the poster did mention that that could just be the user uh, settable limit that uh, is being set there and not the actual limit that the electronic would use if you know what I mean. But it's certainly worth a try. So let's change that to 4396 six oh need to go into edit mode there we go got the cursor now nine six that's it changed so i should be able to come out of that insert a new ee prom into the programmer and burn it and try it in the electronic load so i'll go away and do that now so that's a new e squared prom programmed i'm not going to overwrite the original it's my backup and uh, I'm just going to put this new one onto the board. I've cleaned up the pads on the PCB already, so I just need to solder this one in place. So I'll do that off camera. Uh, I need to get my head right over this circuit board here, and I'll come back. Okay, and here we go. So let's power up. Self test. Yep, and it appears to be running. No error codes anyway. So let's try changing the power setting. Okay, it's at 200 at the moment. Let's try 300. Yes! Wow, it accepted 300. But we need to check the system menu as well. Let's have a look in there and see what it's set to. So I think actually I'll put this back to 200 before I go in there. So shift menu and system set, current max 30, voltage max 150, power max 300. Wow! It appears to be working. But of course, does it actually provide that level of load? 
300 watts. Well, that's the next test. So let me hook it back up to the power supply and give it a test. Okay, we're back up and running again. I've got an external power supply set to 60 volts. It's capable of 5 amps. But first of all, we'll go to the current set and set it to 3 amps. And that should give me a 180 watt load, just to make sure we're okay below the 200. So I'll just turn it on now, here, the power supply is on off camera. Yep, yeah, and we're just below that 180 watt, so yep, yeah, that's looking good. So let's jump up to 4 amps. That should take me above 200 watts, it'll take me to 240 actually. So let's just change I set, 4 amps, and let's see what happens. We should see 240 or thereabouts on there. Yes! Wow! Okay, let's take it a bit higher, all the way to 300. I set, 5 amps. That's the limit of this here anyway, 5 amps. So let's try that. Yes! 300 watt! It's working! Now the next thing to do is run it at 300 watt and vary it around a bit and just make sure everything's stable and make sure these fans come on uh, as they should do. But one comment that somebody made in the last video was that perhaps the control loop may have been modified to compensate for the extra MOSFETs that have been fitted on the 300 watt model. There may be some resistor values that have changed because the feedback voltage coming back as part of that control loop will have changed. Now I did pour over the uh, photographs that I could find of the 300 watt unit and I can't really see anything although it is quite hard to see all the different SMD uh, resistor values etc. The only resistor that I can see that there is a difference on is down here over by this bridge rectifier. On my unit there's one resistor fitted uh, on a bank of two and on the 300 watt model there is actually two resistors fitted there but I couldn't really see too closely as to what that resistor value is. Um, so in actual fact I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to run some tests now at 300 watt and see how it performs. Well there's the front panel on and I've been running it for about 10 minutes now at uh, uh, 5 amps at 60 volts on my external power supply. It's dropped down to about just about 56 volts and uh, of course the power's dropped a little. That's just because of the leads that I'm using here. They're not really quite capable of uh, that sort of current. Um, but both fans are running now and uh, both heat sinks are about just about the same temperature there. So everything seems to be fine. Everything seems to be working. Uh, I will play about with it, play about with different currents and different voltages just to make sure things are stable enough but it's looking good. I think I've managed to convert the 200 watt Menu DC electronic load the M9811 to the 300 watt model so I'll have to go and put a little sticker over this label in the front there. But it also begs the question, there's those other two parameters, the voltage and the current. So theoretically, this 5 amp limit could be pushed up as well as the voltage limit uh, by adjusting those two parameters. But I'm not going to do that. Uh, I think that would be taking it a little bit too far, especially on the, the, uh, the current side, trying to push more amps through this thing. No, I'll not be doing that. I'm happy with it uh, now being a 300 watt electronic load and that'll be fit for purpose back up in the workbench. So if you like this video remember to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Thanks for watching.